Today is March 1st, 2020, and we're looking at my Philanopsis Schillariana. It's been in full loom for a while now, but I hadn't got a chance to video record it. But today we're looking at this single inflorescence that it produced uh, a while back. It produced 72 buds, I think, but the final number that's on the spike that bloomed out is 70. So. It lost one to uh, bud blast, and then I accidentally knocked one out. So this is what we're looking at. This is the best it's ever uh, bloomed so far. It looks like this here. It didn't. The spike didn't last very long. Um, today it looks like it's starting to uh, fade. So um, I guess it's just taking quite a. Every time it blooms, I feel like it's taking quite a bit of a toll on the uh, plant, which is right over here. It's in the middle of producing a new leaf as well. And I, I can tell already that the, the, the new leaf that it has right there, it's not gonna be as big as the previous ones, but um, yeah. Like any other of my Phalaenopsis, um, this one is also prone to mealy bugs. As you can see there, there's one resting on the um, uh, I don't know, it's the column, I guess, is what that's called. Um, but I'll clean it up later. The spike that it has is so heavy that I am adding some of these rocks over here to make sure that it doesn't tip over. Um, normally it just hangs um, using these four um, holes for hanging, um, but I think it looks better without the hangers when it blooms out like this. But um, the risk is that it will always tip over, so I added these rocks for, um, as a ballast. We're sort of in the midst of Phalaenopsis season right now, and uh, some, many of my Phalaenopsis are starting to bloom. So I've gathered them here to show you. Uh, these are just the few that have opened right now. There's actually quite a bit more um, that are still developing. The first one here in the stand that we're looking at is the Phalaenopsis Guadalupe. I'm sorry, uh, Panetta Guadalupe or something. So it's on this uh, new branch, our new flower spike. This is the previous year. And you can see the plant is um, not the greatest. I've been neglecting my files a lot and this leaf right here is an old leaf that's been uh, terribly damaged by spider mites. But the, the bloom is okay. Uh, this one is one of the ones that had been really haven't been really affected by the mealies, but um, that could be coming soon, I don't know. Alright, so moving on. This is a new flower spike on my Phalaenopsis Theodoro or something? Sweet Memory. Or Sweet Memory Babble or Bubble. I don't know. Anyways, it's, um, it's very, very pretty. And it, as you can see there, it has three, three flower spikes right now. There's the old one, I think. And then we got this uh, new one that's developing here. Yeah, so it's still going. Um, yeah, I love how the shape of the flowers are kind of like star shape. It's very, very nice. And moving over this side, we have another Phalaenopsis Shilariana. This is I forgot the cultivar, but I got this from Norman, and it's doing really, really, um, really bad right now. I forgot to water it while it was in bloom, so the leaves are pretty, pretty wrinkly. But I, I, I'm watering it uh, right now. Um, we got 17 blooms on it, I think. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's another form of Phalaenopsis shilariana. Looks pretty nice. Um, as you can tell, I kind of hate staking up the uh, the spike. I kind of enjoy this pendant effect that it has um, when it's naturally grown like this. All right, moving on to the other side. Um, we got this one that's really hard to capture on camera because it's, they're both pointing downwards into the pot. So if I sort of go like this, um, I'm always cutting something off from the view of the camera. But anyways, um, this one is super nice. I love how much substance the petals and uh, sepals are. And that really weird orange-red 
spotting on the uh, flower there is just so striking. There is a fragrance out there I can't remember right now because it's late in the afternoon, so the scent is gone. Um, but yeah, it's one of those fragrant ones as well. And over here we have a No ID Mini Phalaenopsis. And this one is a really, really small one uh, for sure. It has never gotten bigger and all the new leaves has actually gotten smaller. But probably because I was mistreating it. But yeah, for the most part, it has never been um, really big. And the blooms are pretty small as well. Have you uh, a look of my hands compared to it? So it's, it's pretty small. It's um, one of those ones that I purchased um, that was on sale, on clearance, at a grocery store, so definitely no ID. But it's really, really pretty. And it's always bloomed every single year, so it's really nice. And next to here we have a just what looks like to be just a generic white Phalaenopsis. This is actually a species. This is a Phalaenopsis aphrodite. And in addition to being a species, it also has variegated leaves, which is always a bonus. Um, this year has the most uh, blooms it has ever produced for me um, on these two spikes. And this one is unfortunately, I have to say, that's been covered by mealies. I've, I've tried to clean it up as much as I can, but they leave these sticky residue um, on the petals, which kind of ruins the look of the white um, flowers. But yeah, this is all I have now in bloom. Hi everybody! Today is March 29th, 2020 and it's warmer enough now that I've moved all of my orchids outside, or at least most of them. I think there's only, well actually I, I think I, it is all of them now. Um, so pretty much the same setup as last year. All the cats are hanging up under the deck. And um, I've decided that I was going to bring out these plant stand from Ikea with all the phalaenopsis on top of them. So I'm going to try to grow them outside this year. For the most part, uh, the phalaenopsis has been neglected quite a bit and I've lost quite a few over the winter as a result but um, for the majority of them they're they're still okay I'm hoping that um, being, from being outside they'll do a little bit better and on top of the stands they'll um, be prevented from eating by slugs and stuff the Shellariana is coming to an end um, I think but it's still very very pretty right now so just want to show you guys that. In addition to the Phalaenopsis being neglected, I've also neglected a lot of my cats. And so these empty pots that you see here is where it used to be a, a cat that has died over the winter. I suspect that um, there will be a few more casualties before everything sort of settles. Like maybe that one that's right there, and maybe that one. Um, so I'm, I think the cats are the most neglected ones out of all of my orchids. So they're, they weren't doing great, but for now I don't think I'm going to get any more. Um, if anything, I'm just going to divide my current cat collection and fill these empty pots in. All the orchids in the basket, mainly the vendacious types, are still hanging in the basket and they are currently hanging out here. I'm not entirely sure if this particular position is the best for the Phalaenopsis, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, my fear is that it's not enough light here. But as you can see, there are evening light that sort of hits them in this particular area. And in the morning, it's much better over here. I have a little coffee uh, plant over there, because I know they, um, they can do okay under um, a good amount of uh, shade. My Phalaenopsis are in dire need of repotting. Um, I think some of them haven't been repotted for almost two years. So down here, I have a tub full of Archaea bark, 
with some sphagnum moss in there um, in preparation for um, repotting for the entire collection. Even though we kind of have a rough year, um, some of them still manage to bloom pretty well, including this one. It's one of those big lip phalaenopsis. It's like it's pretty pretty long. There are two buds developing on one of my walkies. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen it put out in bloom. And it's really, really surprising because uh, both of my walkies are um, doing pretty bad with the uh, scale infestation. I'm surprised that it actually put out some buds. But I'm hoping that um, I'll get to see it before it dies. Today is June 12, 2020, and I just want to give you a quick update on all the plants that are moved outside. I just want to make a last clip just, just to bring some closure to the update. But so far, um, the fowls that I said that I was sort of recovering a little bit in the spring are slowly recovering. I'm still experiencing a few more deaths, but overall it looks okay. Um, so the fowls are hanging out here, as in the last clip. I've had a little trouble with the amount of sunlight that's on these two set of stands right here. So what I've done is, um, during the day, I've tried to move some of these pods over on uh, the uh, benches right here. Um, they'll catch a little bit of some of the indirect daylight. So um, I can only do some of these like every other day or something like that because moving these takes a little bit of time but I'm hoping that they will be good enough for them during the um, summertime the sun sort of doesn't hit this particular spot that well during the evening like it did in the spring so that's what I'll have to do for the moment but I think they do better outside anyway so that's uh, you know I guess that's what I have to do in my group space there's definitely a few things that are coming into bloom now, like this uh, Phalaenopsis cornu cervi. Um, we have a bloom right here, and there's also buds that are developing on other spikes as well. And there's a spike up here that's kind of way up on the top of the stem, which is kind of unusual. This is my Salaje Yisitana. It's currently in bloom. Uh, this bigger spike and also there is one in the back as well in addition there is another spike that's currently in development that hasn't bloomed out yet the plant isn't doing particularly well or at least to, to my eyes um, in the previous year it had uh, enormous foliage and there were quite a few of them but right now we're working with um, very, very small strappy leaves. So I'm not really sure what that's about, but it seems to be doing okay otherwise. Many of my Cattleyas are producing quite a bit of roots at the moment. Um, they're producing uh, all the roots that are bound to the terracotta pots that I have them in. Uh, particularly this one, this is the C Aristocrat, I think. As you can see, there are quite a bit of uh, roots bound in there. Okay, that's pretty much it for this update. Um, I hope this wasn't too terribly long. And I'm, like I always try to say, I'll try to keep up with updates, but you know, things happen. Anyways, um, you guys stay safe and as always, thank you for tuning in. See you in the next video. Bye.